What's going on, Paisanos? V here, coming at you guys, well, with another market watch today. Common question of the day. If you cracked open a fresh, new Starlight Rare, would you keep it or would you sell it? And why would you keep it? What would you do with it? Would you put it towards your collection? Or would you just, you know, use it to trade for other cards? Or would you just unload it as fast as possible? C cards like Starlight Rare Effect Failure, newly, newly released at a Eternity Code, I guess. I mean, newly released as far as the word newly released can go for a Starlight Rare of a card we'd have multiple printings of. But, you know, once again, newly released out of Eternity Code, $531 market price is almost about $1,000 for this card, a thousand dollars. Let's take that into consideration. The ultimate rare is way less, but this is almost a thousand dollars. I don't think I have to tell you that Starlight Rare prices have gone through the roof throughout this entire pandemic-like situation. And um, a lot of people are just, you know, they don't know really what to do with some of these cards. Then again, a, a, a Fact Filler and Eternity Code Starlight Rare has not been fully legally released in the United States. So that might change. But as long as you're new to the channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, like button, and comment down below. Also, make sure to hit the notification bell when I do my live streams, which happens uh, every now and then. So make sure to uh, be notified when that does happen. Okay. We also have other Starlight Rares like Star uh, Skystriker Ace Rose. This card rose up to $800. Actually, it's almost about back down to about half the price points, roughly around $421 for this card. And then we have Marisa Seahorse, Starlight Rare. Well, the market price is roughly around $132. Realistically, it's about $150. Uh, but then we're seeing it go back down as well, down to $400. Still down and still going down. Hope this card goes back down to affordable price because why? Why would this card maintain a crazy high price point? It's because the market is just... The market is just trying to conserve good value, I guess. But the values of cards, the values of people trying to go in and grab cards, is declining certain cards in the market. Some of my people might say this is a market crash. I disagree. Some people might say the market is just, you know, it's just, it's, it's going down and here we go, everybody. It's Now we go downhill on the roller coaster. No, no. People got really excited and hyped up cards like Marissa Starlight, uh, Star, uh, Seahorse, Starlight Rare. And you can play just getting rid of them because why would you want to hold a card that was, that was six hundred dollars? That's in Marine Sets. That might not be a tier one deck. Might be. Who knows? Same with a uh, 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 Sugar Ace Rose. Everyone got really excited. Everyone grabbed theirs. They're like, yes, here it is. And then everyone played Scash Strikers online, and they were like, oh wait a minute, that's right. This deck isn't as good as that we thought it was. L Max Ready oh looks really nice. So we have something really amazing happening soon. Really, really awesome. And about. 12 hours, everyone goes insane. You see, last ban list was going to be effective on April 1st, but we got the ban list uh, about almost a week before, and it was effective, the ban list we got a week before, on April 1st. This ban list says, you know, once again, same thing, same wording, but it says no sooner than June 1st. Well, in 12 hours, it's going to be June 1st, meaning the hype. The craziness, everyone going in going, oh my god, what could be on and off the ban list is going to be happening within 12 hours. And it's not going to stop the fever pitch will only increase. You can players will only go in and go, it could be this card, it could be this card. Do I have this card? What variety do I have this card? And and you can players are going to be going crazy over the anticipation of what is the ban list. This business is going to be relatively insane because, well, mo mo many factors. One, because obviously the pandemic, but two, and I think this is more importantly, Yu-Gi-Oh! players are going to be able to all return to Yu-Gi-Oh! We basically had the, the, the accumulation of a ban on all of us. Every Yu-Gi-Oh! player on planet Earth in the TCG for the past couple of months, other places maybe longer, every Yu-Gi-Oh! player had a ban on themselves. Well, soon we'll be no longer limited. Some of you can play starting to return to locals already, but we want sanctioned Yu-Gi-Oh events. And this will be the sanctioned Yu-Gi-Oh event ban list. It's a pretty big deal. So what we're going to be seeing is a ban list come out, Yu-Gi-Oh players go crazy, but Yu-Gi-Oh players before that ban list comes out go even crazier because they still want to see what's going to happen. Hopefully this will be a crazy ban list. The last one wasn't that good. Everything got a lot, like mostly... Uh, thrown on the balance, but a good balance is a balance that's balanced where cards come off and then cards go on. It's a good mixture, and that's what makes a good balance. This last balance was really that good, but then again, Karate pretty much knew, well, there wasn't going to be much Yu-Gi-Oh! happening. This time, we know yu gi -Oh! is happening. We're just waiting for the green light from Konami for sanctioned Yu-Gi-Oh! events. Stores are still running it, 
but sanctioned by Konami themselves? Well, that's going to be happening soon. Well, once again, keep our eye on this ban list because this one's going to have, I, I think this is going to be a very crazy ban list. The next one probably would be around August if I had a guess, maybe September, and that's going to be the uh, the new regional season balance, but I'll tell you right now, a lot of you can play aren't, don't really care about that right now. They hear about this one because why? We have our invites already. You got about, let's say, conservatively speaking, two to three thousand Yu Gi Oh players with the invite that rolls over till next year. The regionals is basically a great exhibition match for some Yu Gi Oh players. For other Yu-Gi-Oh players like myself and many, 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 many others, thousands of Paisanos, we're talking a top eight. 500 man reach event. Win a mat. <laughs> Take top four. Don't we didn't forget about you. You also get the mat and you get a deck box. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what's coming to do with the price support. Hopefully they'll up it. Hopefully they'll add more to it. But overall, we want to start playing Yu-Gi-Oh now. And this balance is gonna be the first balance we can actually start playing physical Yu-Gi-Oh under. It's a bit of a big deal. We also have two Master Swords coming out at Astro Pack 8, super rare. You can please get excited about the new set coming out. Well, by the time you're watching this video this month, uh, market price is currently roughly around $4, and yeah, no, it's about $35. Near Mint, at $41. After that place is gone, it's about $50. We also have Daikoichi, the, ba uh, the Battle Chanted Locomotive. This is a side deck card in gold format. Check this out. $22 market price, Lightning Plan Limited, $17, First Editions, about $25, after that one's gone, it's about $30. This is all that stuff in the market of Dekoichi, the Battle Locomotive. It's just a good side that card, I don't know. I, I have these, they're nice, I don't, I don't, I don't play GOAT, I haven't played GOAT enough to really go, alright, my side deck strategy, my strat and side deck and GOATs from a deck that's, tw uh, you know, 15 years old, um, this is a side of my Dekoichis, I I've never done that, I just have it in there, because why not? I think the main card in Go format is normally scapegoats. Card we're holding at roughly around a forty-four dollar market price. Unlimited copy right now. Look at that, forty-five. I thought that one's gone. It's about forty-eight dollars. Once again, Go format. That card says goats in it. Most decks in that format use scapegoat. It's pretty good. And I think a lot of you players are going to realize that too late. They're going to see this card get bought out eventually. And everyone's going to be freaking out, wondering, Oh man, I would have bought scapegoats, but now it's all high in price. I can't buy it. Okay, right now you can buy it. It's going to go high in price. We know this is going to happen already. Go in now and buy it. Oh, that's right. You got to wait till after it goes up high in value. And then be that, you know, once again, I love talking about the, the fox and the berries. The berries are too high. All those berries are no good. It's the same thing in this situation. Keep buying this card. We also have Phoenix Winged Wind Blast. I hate those W's. Uh, Ultimate Rare coming out of Flaming Attorney with an $18 price point in the market. The actual price point for the card is about $18. If you want a first edition version, the only listing is the PSA 8. And that card's uh, $71 for this card. We also have Karma Cut Ultimate Rare coming out of Shadows of Infinity. $14 market price. Yeah, Lightning Plan Limit is about $23. If you want a first edition version, $40. $40. Then, Neiman First Edition version, $75. Okay. <laughs> Even Breakthrough Skill, Ultimate Rare out of Cosmo Blazer. Ultimate Rare, once again, $10 market price. Yeah, that card's $22. $40 bucks if you want a First Edition version. Once again, I think these are great cards that look nice. Some of them, I mean, in the case of Karma Cut, might actually see meta play. It's good against Eldritch, if it's pure Eldritch, which we know Eldritch realizing this, and many other factors, is hybriding themselves to multiple variations of their build, so that's, they're, not, they're not necessarily stuck on just being pure Eldritch. And we're not seeing much of that. We're seeing more like a Synchro Eldritch or, um, or, 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 or Invoked Eldritch, or, or one of the many variants that can easily play. Still a good card, though. And, um, yeah, I don't know about Phoenix Windblast, it's not bad of a card. I mean, we, the only card in the Yu-Gi-Oh! that's kind of like this is, what, like, Ryza, the Storm Monarch, and, um, Drop Wolf, I guess. Um, but that's really it. So, this is also a very unique card, but it's only good in a certain type of meta. And we're nowhere near that meta. And then Breakthrough Skill, um... Alright, this is a nice card, if you want to max rarity a casual deck, but for realistically speaking, we have Lost Wind. Which is infinitely better than Breakthrough Skill. Lost Wind is reusable, kind of like what Breakthrough Skill does in a weird way, but it also negates your opponent's monster's effect, has their attack, and then we got the new version that came out in Eternity Code. So, sure, if you have Breakthrough Skill, would you hold it still? Would you sell it? I don't know. I think if I had it, I would sell it. Then we have Volcanic Rocket. So, this card it has a common short print version, realistically speaking, uh, Dual Terminal 5. 
okay two dollar market price nope wrong it's 76 dollars for this card if you want a secret rare version actually no my not the secret rare version i'm sorry the super rare version uh came out of a sneak peek preview series three i don't know what that's from uh two dollar market price it's also not anyway um and if you want any other version, oh, there's a secret rare version. Okay, I thought I had one. Uh, Force of the Breaker secret rare with a $31 market price. Well, no big deal. It's a $200. $200, please. Um, and, and if you buy three of them, cut you a deal. $600 with a dollar shipping. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, I, I, I guess there's some volcanic stuff happening. Uh, I, some people were in my live stream that like, was telling me about this, how this works. But $600, man, come on. That's a lot of money. Beautiful looking secret rare, though. We also have Super Rejuvenation coming out of Lost Arts promo with a $5 market price. It's currently at $8. Listen, do not sleep on Super Rejuvenation. The second we get a decent Dragon deck, you can run Super Rejuvenation and just draw a ton of hand traps. Like you combo off and face Super Rejuvenation, your opponent doesn't stop it. You draw a bunch of hand traps, you have a great board, you have great hand traps, and you have a good full-size hand because this is one card or because you play Dragons. Now, I want you to stop and think for a second. Imagine Super Rejuvenation... But instead of saying dragon monsters, fill it with something else. Would you use it? Comment down below. I'll tell you right now, this card is really, really broken. This We just haven't had a dragon deck to fit in it yet. But ultimately, it's going to be useful. We also have Chaos Hunter out of Storm of Ragnarok, Secret Rare, which nobody's really looking at right now. With a $9 market price, the current value for Unlimited is about $9. First edition is also about $11. This card's still really good. Um, it's just not good right now. Though it's a secret rare original print as someone Ragnarok, I think this card has great potential in the future, as it previously did have potential. So, keep an eye out for this card. We also have the World Championship 2019 packs. Um, yeah, $300 market price on these. They're already, I mean, you got one, one over here that's open. It's roughly around $325. And after that, you got one at $450, and that's it. It's sold out. I, I think the, the market is realizing the fact that these are just these only come out one day in one year and that's it konami is not going to re-release these there's not going to be like a try to you know grab bag of 20 cha uh, uh, world championship packs that's not happening these also specifically say one out of i think it's like eight thousand or nine thousand each on, you know, on these so it's relatively hard to grab these and find these and as time goes on the value increases increases listen Hopefully we get the 2020 uh, World Championship packs or the opportunity to grab those and play for those. I would love to have the opportunity. Wouldn't you? Comment down below because I really want one to do a 2021. I don't care what it is. I just want it because it's, once again, one of those things that comes out this year, this day. And if you don't get it, you got to go in the secondary market and buy it. It's pretty crazy if you think about it. Then we have Trishula. There's so many versions of Trishula. This is so many versions of the card. So many rarities. And I mean, there's a couple of things we can talk about. Number one. What's the most hardest to get Rarity of Trishula? I would say probably the Dual Terminal Trishula from DT4. Uh, $140 market price is roughly around $140. After that one is gone, $165. After that one's gone, $190. And then you're looking at $200 uh, Dual Terminal Trishula. It's very, very expensive. Um, they also, but you know what? There's no wrong answers. This is one of those things where if you have that one, or you have the Ultimate Rare out of Astro Pack 8, there realistically is no wrong answer. The, the Ultimate Rare out of Astro Pack 8 with a $91 uh, price point is roughly around $92. It's hovering around the price point. Um, then there's only ones and threes. You're seeing the walls on page one. Go over here to page two. It starts hitting up to almost 200. I mean, it's 130. It's not exactly 200 yet, but still. Ultimate, no one's going to look at your Ultimate Rare Trishula and go, oh, that's not the highest rarity. Uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to get. Go ahead and crack some packs for Astro Pack 8. One thing, I still think uh, the dual tournament version is definitely higher, but the ulti one, pretty good too. I really do, I don't understand what's the whole thing, like, oh, Trishula is not that good. Yeah, yeah, it's like $100. It's pretty good. $100 for one card, and I could easily, you could easily turn around and buy the card for 40 cents. Yeah, that is pretty good. Let's chill about this. But once again, I think dual tournament is better. Okay, um, we also have Trishula, Dragon of the Icy Imprisonment. Now, this card's getting a reprint. I, I totally know that. I totally get it, and I totally don't care. Um... This card is a Shonen Jump Magazine promo, meaning it's very hard to find because they don't make any more of these. Not only that, the market price is fifteen dollars. So the value of the card stabilizing at fifteen dollars. We're gonna get a reprint. I, I want to. I just want to really emphasize that. But to get a Shonen Jump Magazine promo version of these, well, it's just, it's just a better version. Let's be honest. This is the highest version. And then you got Trisha Rose over here. And yeah, it's Necros. Necros card's been crazy lately. The Secret Rares have been crazy lately. Necros just still had the Secret Forces, $15 market price. <laughs> right. The card's $24. You want a first edition version? 
it's also 20, it's also 24 dollars <laughs> Necros, just Necros. And I love that. I show you the ultra rares like here. Buy these. Yeah, okay. Um, click on Secret Forces. Move over here, and then look at all these other cards like Brionac, which is forty-five. Like Valkyrus, which actually is thirteen dollars. Not that bad, actually, to be honest with you. That should be a lot higher. Then we have Deep Sea Diva coming out of Turtle Pack Booster Four, the super rare, with an eighty-seven dollar market price. Well, you can see roughly around ninety. Then it goes to ninety-seven, and then a hundred dollars. The weird thing about this is, with OTS, OTS Pack 13, easily the worst OTS pack we've ever had, except Abyss Dweller and, I think, Deep Sea Diva, um, we're getting Super Rare Deep Sea Diva. So, here's the question. If you are looking to play Water Mermos, do, do you wait, or do you go in and grab the Super Rares? And here's what I'm going to do, because I'm looking to get in the deck max rarity. I have majority of it, majority of the deck done already. Here's my game plan, and I'm going to fill you in. I'm going to grab the Super Rares from OTS 13 for now. The reason why is, by the way, is because why grab this now at 90 when the market's about to be flooded with another super rare rarity, same rarity as Deep Sea Diva from Terra Pack Booster 4. That will obviously drive the price down of Deep Sea Diva from Terra Pack Booster 4, and then we'll go and get the original rarity. Other than the fact that they're both super rares, and maybe there's a difference in coloration, I guarantee you there's going to be a difference in the coloration of the cards. The super rare, the others, uh, um, there's not much of a difference as far as anything other than the fact that you paid more for a card. So, why go in and buy a car at 90? Uh, times that bad boy by three, because you're probably running three of these, and you're looking at $270 with the TCG player's tax, let's say a little almost near $300, even $280, let's say, if you have, you have a good tax bracket. Why would you go and pay that much money right now when you could just wait and get the 13 Super Rare, or even the Ultra Rare out of those Saga, whatever, it doesn't matter, and then wait for the price to drop? I think that's probably a good idea. So, with the Eternity Code, um, I think it's Eternity Code moving forward, okay? They will, all cards will be evenly distributed, which means no short or underprinted foils in the main set for the foils. And you players are very skeptical about this. We're just that's how we are. We're just skeptical. We go, Konami, are you sure? Konami's like, dude, I got your back. We will not short print foils. And we're like, that's kind of crazy, Konami. Why? How are you gonna how are you gonna make money by ripping us off? And Konami's like, I will find a way to jack you. But in your sets, foils, I got your back. And you can play like, wow, come on, that's real, that's, 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 that's real sweet of you. So enjoy paying. <laughs> Comment slash short print, attorney code. Right now it's 56 cents. But could we see a future in which Konami's like, yo, you like these short print cards? These hard to get cards, Paisanos? Huh? You like that? All right. One parallel seed, dra one parallel exceed. I don't know why I said, quote, it looks like a dragon. One parallel exceed per case. Coming. Come at me. Welcome to, welcome to the new market. $500 commons. It's on, I mean, I just saw this today. I, I honestly don't know if this is true, but it'd be hilarious if Konami was like, see, listen, we will not short print fours in the main set, but commons though? Oh, we're going to get you so good on commons. You're going to wish we short printed anything else except your commons like Parallax Seed. One per case. That's it. And you know what? You're welcome, okay? Because those starlights are like one per two cases. We're hooking you up. Buy two cases, get two parallel seeds. Buy three, hey, you get three. I'm just joking. Honestly, there's a bunch of, of, of this card around, obviously, in the market. It's just funny the fact that it says short print. My mind instantly went to, of course, something's going to be short printed. They're going to get you no matter what. It, it, it's like Konami's literally told your wallet, you have two options. Die or be killed. They're going to get you. <laughs> it's just, they're going to pretend they're not. And then they stab you in the stomach. This is Paisons. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. I know a Sunday market watch doesn't normally happen, but uh, yeah, we set this up on like Friday, I think it was, on the live stream. So once again, make sure to click on the subscribe button next to a little notification bell. Click on that to get informed when I do my live streams. And give this video a like. And once again, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about these crazy um, solid rare prices. It's your boy V and you Paisanos. <laughs> well, you Paisanos have a great day.